There's a quote by a Stoic philosopher, Epictetus. Wealth consists of not having great possessions, but having few wants. Let me read this again. Let me read this again. Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. Man, that's, that's incredible to me. I felt like in today's society, we are surrounded by people yearning. We're all yearning for something. We're yearning for love. We're yearning for money. We're yearning for the better things in life and connection. But some people want something as simple as friendship. Yearning to have that connection that you used to have as a child. I began to think of myself whenever I was a young kid. I used to be by myself a lot. But when I did go out of my comfort zone and started to talk to more people, I realized how easy it was to get friends as a child when we're in the same place every day. We're exploring and learning things new together. It was easier to make friends as a 8-year-old or a 12-year-old versus me now as a 28-year-old. So this leads me into the very first point. Why is it so difficult? to have friends as an adult. I felt like as a child, it was very simple. Now as an adult, we have all these responsibilities and ambitions and trials and tribulations that we go through on a daily constant basis that sometimes we don't feel the need that we need anybody else, especially if you move away. Some of your friends that you may have had as childhood and then you go to college and then they get married and then they have kids and you just don't see them anymore, but they were still your lifelong best friend. It's a tough pill to swallow not having that comfort friend that you can only speak to via text message or virtually. You may have noticed as you've gotten older how complex our lives are, how complex our routines are. And how complex it is to have these ambitions and drives while working normal nine to fives or being a creative, having four or different four different so hobbies and ideas to make your income to live in a livable mean, but also be happy. We're worrying about all these things and these responsibilities and these ambitions. It's sometimes hard to think about a friend. We think about how easy it was as a child in our childhood to have a friend it was so easy to create friends as a child because you had the same routine pretty much every day you were going to school you had somebody to take care of you at all times of the day and now that you're older the person that's taking care of you is you you don't have that additional person that will drive you to your uh, school location. Now that my daughter is of age and she's in school, I'm driving her to school. I'm like, man, she's going to her little nine to five job. She's going to her nine to five job right now. And, you know, being with other kids and learning. And those are her new friends. These are her friends that she is building bonds with now. And the friends that we bond over the years that we had the same routine, it, it was easy. But then when you get out of high school and everybody goes to different colleges or chooses different life paths, you start to realize, man, there's so many options, so many things to do. I don't have time to dedicate that once time that I had eight hours a day with that friend that I had. I don't have that anymore. We maybe have maybe an hour a week or we a text on the phone. It's hard to navigate having friends as an adult when you have your own life to live and they're not living in the same state as you or they're, you know, working a job that's very demanding where they don't, can't contact you as much as they used to. And as we get older and getting into our late 20s, 30s, 40s, everybody has their own different things. Now some people have kids, some people are married with their significant others, they have their roommates that they consider that are closer, and you're like this wallflower just wondering what happened. I had all these friends in high school, I had all these friends in middle school, I had all these friends in college, where are they at now? Why is it so hard for me to get back in the shuffle of finding a friend just to go out with so I don't have to be with the same people at home and my family? 
it is very difficult and the economy it's expensive to go anywhere it makes you just want to stay at home and ever since covid for a lot of us we've lost our reading the room of social we we've lost a lot of social capabilities that we had before covid before covid it wasn't really a second thought about you know hugging people and getting closer to people now people just love the comfort of their own home and they've they found the peace and solitude and now they found so much peace in their solitude that they forgot like oh my god there's people around me that i would love to connect with i don't have anybody to necessarily talk to about this goal or idea i have or to vent um because we're not to that level yet or that friend you once had you don't want to bother them with something trivial and you're like wait we haven't talked to each other in weeks like why are we talking to each other about this it makes it so many layers when you're an adult you don't you realize the things that you used to say to a person you can't say them now and we've gotten to their comfort of being on our own that is one of our main reasons we have been so comfortable being on our own it is hard to get out of that comfort zone there is a scripture in the bible i want to read to you because I feel like whether you believe in God or not, we all know there's a time, there's a place, there's a season for everything. This is Ecclesiastes 3, 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. That is something that I really resonate with because there is a time and place and season for every person i remember i had a very close friend that we were friends for three to four years and then we just stopped being friends because we don't see each other eye to eye anymore and that's okay to not be friends with people that you don't see eye to eye the next thing fear of rejection and this leads on to the next point of why is it so hard the fear of rejection I remember when I first got divorced, I had no friends. Um, My ex at the time was in the military and all my friends at the time were military spouses. And if you don't know, usually when you break up with somebody that's in the military, in military world spouses, it only is about them. Like there's no outside world per se. And once that bond is broken, it's kind of weird you being the single friend while everybody else is still married couples and they're going through their trials and tribulations and then there's you being the single person like living your life in a totally different way than they're living it's not the same way so most of them end up moving or we just didn't talk anymore and we grew out of touch and these are people that i considered really really close friends and you know some of them i even babysitted their babies some i even you know, went to vacations with, and we just stopped talking, and that hurt, you know, because I'm like, wow, you know, <laughs> one, I did, um, m- went to see even after I got divorced, but most of them, we just stopped talking, and I had to get over my fear of going up to people and asking them, even if it was as simple as, like, I really like your outfit, or, you know, like, what's your number? I would love to, you know, if we have the same vibe, the same book. I may not ever contact them again, but I had to go with that fear of, of like, approaching people. And the best thing that worked for me, I did join Bubble BFF um, to find like-minded people. I could just tell sometimes by pictures or their vibes, I could see myself being friends with them more times than not. And, um... You know, you could just tell people's energy. You you know, you know when you can feel like, okay, this person may be a good match for me. And it's kind of like a relationship in a way. And I have one girlfriend that I met off of there that we are very, 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 like, we have our little cocktail dates. She's a person that we, we can talk to about our problems. But it's, she's not the person or friend that I would message every day. She doesn't message me every day. I don't message her every day. And that was kind of like a tough pill for me to swallow because I really wanted a friendship that I can talk to somebody. Um, Not necessarily every day, but just somebody just like, hey, let's check in once a week, you know, not just via Instagram. And I had to go back on it again and, you know, try to find some other people that I can, you know, 
I don't want to say the word fill the void, but just to be like, okay, I'm not just in my solitude when I do have a break. I'm not just being by myself. I'm with other people and it doesn't have to be my boyfriend. And I feel like, especially in a relationship, it's so easy to be in comfort with your boyfriend or your significant other or your girlfriend that they're your best friend and you don't really need anybody else. And I feel like it's somewhat unhealthy to not have anybody else as a support system other than your spouse because there could be a time where you broke up there could be a time when you divorce and then you're left with oh my god I have nobody to run to with with these big issues and I don't want to tell my family and I loved having the fact of having a friend at the time I did a really really close friend like I said there's a season for everybody you know some people stay in your life longer. Some people stay in your life shorter. You just, you don't know. It's not like you plan it. You just kind of grow apart. And that person was such a saving grace for me during my time. Whenever I got my divorce, we were friends for another three to four years until we just recently just are in different life point. And I feel like once you get to that 25, 26 point, the friends that you thought that were like compatible it's not compatible with your 27 year old brain or your 28 year old brain or your 26 year old brain I feel like there's different life points where we move on and it's okay to move on from that friendship or that friend group and i know it's hard we always want to you know boulder up and be you know don't want to expose ourselves in the fear of something happening and losing another friendship but sometimes we just have to try again try again and try again until you find that perfect person for you this leads us on to our next next point um and it is changing priorities when you have been in the mood and groove to only focus on you focus on your significant other yourself your child your family it's weird to add in that layer of oh I need to go go to the beach with this friend I need to go grab a book with this friend it's very different changing your priorities and reminding having a reminder to yourself to let me check in on this person don't be the person to only tell about your life and vent about your life you want to learn about them too they want to learn vice versa and that's why I'm have slowly changed my priorities from what I used to of just you know telling people about my life and I want to hear about what's going on with you and not saying that people can't be negative or have bad days but if you find yourself with a friend that is constantly negative every single day like no matter what and it's just like nothing can make them happy nothing can make them happy with how you speak then sometimes better than not it's time for you to let them go and change your priorities on which friends that you need to keep closer to you so this is probably one of the most important chapters to me is what we can do about it we can stop waiting every two to three months and this is a spade calling a spade like i do this quite often with some people I wait a couple of months and reach out to them like, hey, let's go out here. And it's like, how do you expect to grow with somebody you only speak to once every two months or go out every couple months? There's, it just never will happen. It will, and it's sometimes very hard when you have a kid because you're like, okay, on the weekends, I want to spend time with my child. And I think I have to work on that too, finding other mommy friends that, you know, can, I can do a two-in-one you know but sometimes I don't want to always have my child with me on the weekend you know that's your free time too you're okay even especially a single mother it's okay for you to go out and have fun and a lot of people feel like oh fun means clubbing no fun can be a plethora of things I love going to record stores I love going to bookshops I love going to the beach I love going sitting at the park and going to look at the dolphins in the water like there's a lot of things that people can do to have fun and sometimes they just need that one-on-one time with somebody else other than people in their immediate family and friend group so we have to be mindful when we want to grow a friendship we cannot blame it on the other person that they're not talking to you enough are you doing the consistent acts of reaching out texting them letting them know like hey i'm 
proud of your this thing that you told me that you were doing like what's been up with that have you been following up with them with that topic that they talked about at lunch and then are you waiting two months after you saw them to bring it up and be like oh whatever happened to that no you could have messaged them that or sent a voice message about something fun that's going in your life like hey i just did this like i wish you were here you should um come to the next time or something like that you can do those things without losing sight of yourself and losing sight of friends that you used to have and then for those long distance friendships plan something once a year i know we all have very limited pto and time to get away but plan something once a year whether you they go to your place or you go to their place so it can be easier than for on the weekend whatever the case may be so you can keep that friendship if that is something that you want to do and that other person wants to as well if the other person is not really interested in keeping their keeping the friendship if they're just interested in keeping the friendship in the past then you should too leave them in the past if you feel like there's not really any effort of like when are we going to see each other that's like a long distance relationship we have to treat our friendships just like relationships would you expect a boy or a girl like to not talk to you for two to three weeks and then be like hey let's go on a date excuse me no so you shouldn't do your friends like that treat your friends like your relationships and i guarantee you you can have stronger friendship as an adult i want to thank you for joining me today on this very sensitive topic and i hope you will go out there and try again if you haven't and welcome to katora's kaleidoscope